One day, I was walking outside with my friends. It was cold out, so I was wearing a winter jacket. As I was walking, I was fidgeting and checking my pockets. And then came my surprise. In one of my pockets, I found a $20 bill that I never even knew I had. I took it out and showed it to some of my friends. We all wondered what to do with it. Maybe we should go out to lunch. We weren't sure. And then one of my friends said that, since I never even knew I had the 20, I would never miss it. Therefore, I should donate it to whoever needs it the most. I thought this was an excellent idea. I wanted to donate my 20 to whoever needs it the most, but who was that? I knew of, I knew of many different nonprofits and many different people in need. Who needed my $20 bill the most? My friends all had different ideas. Some suggested local nonprofits, some even suggested our own university. There's certainly no shortage of charities competing for our attention. Our email inboxes and postal mailboxes are bombarded by charity advertisements. Our universities have all asked us to make a senior gift. Heck, we even changed the channel when that sad commercial with the cute puppies comes around. You know which one I'm talking about. I'm just a poor college student, so I want my money to have an impact. I want my $20 to go far. But where could I do that? My journey began when I heard that good giving should start at home. Think globally, but act locally, I was told. I thought this was smart. I knew of many different problems here at home and many different organizations that were helping. But then I learned just how much further my money goes if donated overseas. For example, imagine I offered you this choice. You could take option A and spend $40,000 to cure the blindness from one blind person. Or you could take option B and spend the same $40,000 but cure blindness from 1,000 blind people. Hopefully this choice is obvious. We'd all take option B. You spend the same 40K in either scenario, but in option B, 999 more people get their sight. Option B is literally 1,000 times better. But these two choices, option A, option B, it's all pretty contrived, right? Not so fast. You see, in the United States, it's often impossible to cure blindness. However, we can go to the Guide Dogs of America, a nonprofit that works on training guide dogs and providing them to blind people so they can better able to get around. According to them, the cost of training a guide dog is $42,000. In the developing world, people are often blind due to trachoma, which is a bacterial infection in the eye. All it takes to cure trachoma is $40 to the Fred Hollows Foundation. We pay them $40 and they perform a simple surgery that gets rid of the trachoma. For the same cost as it takes to train a guide dog, you can cure more than 1,000 people of blindness in the developing world. Why is this the case? It's not that the Guide Dogs of America is full of fraud, funneling money to for-profit fundraisers or wasting expenses on overhead. It's not even that the Fred Hollows Foundation is better run or has more effective managers. Rather, it's the simple fact that the Fred Hollows Foundation is working in the developing world, where money simply goes further. You see, in the United States, we already cured trachoma as in 1960, so it's no longer a problem here. In the United States, it's much harder to cure blindness because so many of the easy cases have already been treated. This is not true in the developing world. The same is true when we look at poverty. In the United States, when we take into account food stamps, subsidies, and tax credits, we find that 0.5% of Americans are living in extreme poverty, which is less than $2 a day. This is bad, definitely. But in the developing world, 70% of people are living in extreme poverty. And they don't have access to food stamps or homeless shelters to stay afloat. And that's when I learned a very simple yet powerful fact. Money simply goes further in the developing world. I think of myself as a poor college student, but my $20 barely even gets me through my day. Heck, it's not even enough to buy a tank of gas. But in the developing world, $20 is enough for two weeks. $20 allows you to buy food, invest in your homes, and pay school fees. $20 can be the difference that empowers you to get out of extreme poverty. And that simple yet powerful fact really resonated with me. I knew that my $20 could make such a large difference in the developing world. I don't mean to trivialize the many problems here in the United States. I certainly wish I had enough money to cure poverty, homelessness, and hunger, both here in the United States and in the developing world. But I don't. Instead, my resources are limited. Instead, it comes down to a choice. Option A or option B? Which one would you choose? So what are we supposed to do if we don't know how to make our money have a difference? Certainly, we can't just quit our jobs and work full time comparing nonprofits to figure out which one has the largest impact, right? Well, luckily for us, there are people doing just this. 
Poland Karnowski and Ellie Hassenfeld used to work in the hedge fund industry when they decided they wanted to donate some of their money to charity. To their surprise, they found it very difficult to find high-quality information about where to make a difference. So they actually quit their jobs and created GiveWell, a nonprofit organization dedicated to finding outstanding giving opportunities and putting the full details of their analysis online so that anyone can learn from them where to make a difference. The organizations that GiveWell select are thoroughly vetted to make sure what they're doing really works. GiveWell does in-depth site visits, conducts detailed interviews, and does a thorough review of scientific evidence to find organizations that are the best of the best of the best. Organizations that GiveWell select are proven, cost-effective, underfunded, and outstanding. And you don't even need to take their word for it. They publish pages and pages of evidence on their website at givewell.org so that anyone can go there and learn how to make a difference. And that's when I knew where I wanted to give my 20. One of the organizations that GiveWell recommends is the Schizosomiasis Control Initiative. A bit of a mouthful to say, I know. It's not a sexy name, and it's not a flashy charity. Instead, it's run by a bunch of academics at the Imperial College in London. The Schizosomiasis Control Initiative, or SCI, does one simple thing. They treat children in the developing world of parasitic worm infections, the kind of infections you would never find in the United States. These worms live in the stomachs of developing world children and absorb their nutrients. Instead of feeding yourself, you feed these worms. SCI gets these worms out, by providing children with a deworming tablet that only costs 50 cents to buy. Just think, for two quarters, you could deworm a child. Deworming causes improved health and nutrition and reduces the chance of early death. Moreover, when a child is dewormed, they regain energy and are better able to attend school. Deworming is an amazing buy, but there still aren't enough people funding it yet. Here's an amazing opportunity to make a difference. So really, the choice is even better. I'm excited about my amazing opportunity to make such a large difference. Because of this, I just gave my 20 to the SCI. Uh, together, good, together, my heart motivated me to want to give. But my head told me to think about it some, review the evidence, and think about where I can make a, an impact. I urge you to consider taking a similar journey as I did, and review the evidence and think about where you can make an impact. I understand that good giving is an emotional and personal affair. And giving with your heart is great. But I urge you to review the evidence, consider going to givewell.org, think about where you can make a difference, and consider combining your heart and your head. Thank you.